Hi, this is Rick. One of the features I've always wanted in Armour 3 is for AI to have the ability to come and revive players. The benefit of it is if you, for example, playing a co-op game in single player mode, in other words, you are the only player in the group uh, and you've started your own listen server and you player one in the required position as team leader. The benefit is fantastic because the AI can then really support you in the sense that they will come and revive you and so on when when possible it's not a hundred percent reliable because ai would let's say you're under fire and um, they die in the process of trying to get to you you may have run ahead uh, in a rambo style and you might have put yourself in in jeopardy to the extent that no one can actually get to you in those instances well you're just going to have to respawn but it's I would say probably 90, 99% there at the moment. It's not 100%. There's just a few kind of little glitches that, the, that I'm still working on. I'm going to include it in the Dogs of War Part 2 mission. If you want to download the script, you can subscribe to the mission on Steam Workshop and then just DPBO the mission and pull the script out. I'll show you how, how the script is integrated into the mission at the present moment. Um, it's quite simple. You just put down some triggers, one trigger for each of the units. Uh, put an, an indestructible enemy in the base just to show how the AI respond differently when they're under threat. They also change their stance so they won't necessarily just run up to you in a standing position. Uh, they'll crawl up to you in some cases. Uh, there's also as a test to show that there's another, AI, another human being in this mission. On my network, uh, I've, I've added Raven. Raven's actually a human player, although he's not actually playing at the moment. So if I'm going to shoot him, you look at the top right, it says uh, George Williams Unit P3 is attempting to get to Raven. So he gets to Raven. There's a slight delay while Raven rolls over onto his back in the unconscious state. The animation takes about two seconds. Now you notice he's using a proper animation, not the one where he injects himself. Uh, okay, he's completed it. It's overridden the standard biz revive system, and now Raven is back back up and running, so to speak. Um, now, in my case, uh, if you see at the bottom of the screen, the units, the, the group is still made up of eight units. I'm going to blow myself up with a grenade. Currently the group is in yellow combat mode, so P3 Williams is attempting to get me. He's revived me. And I'm back up and running. So I'm going to show you how this is done in the mission, or how to imp imp integrate it. So, there are basically eight playable units in the group. The group is over here. So that's me, the player, and I've got units, and they're all num named, this is named uh, P1. And there's P2, P3, up to P8. Okay, so to, to call the script, I basically created one trigger for each unit because I don't know how many human players there'll be in the game. So these are all playable, potentially playable units. One trigger for each unit. The trigger is repeatable. And the condition of the trigger is, is player P1. In other words, if P1 is a player, and the damage to P1 is greater than 0 0.2. And the reason it's 0 0.2 is because the revive system sometimes kicks in at around 2 point, 0 0.25, thereabouts. So if, if P1 is a player, and which he will obviously be because he's going to be the team leader, but in any event, this is just the same process for each trigger. If is player P1 and, and uh, P1 has sustained uh, at least 20% damage and the life state of P1 is incapacitated 
which is the life state required for the revive system to kick in, then run the script. And what it does is it passes the unit uh, name to the script, which is called Ross AI Heal Player, strangely enough. So then the second trigger would be is player P2, damage P2 is greater than that, life state P2, null pass P2 to the script, also repeatable script. And basically each one of these triggers is exactly the same except for the, the unit identifier. But I'm not going to go through the script in great detail, I'm just going to give you the, the rough takeouts. Uh, the hurt player is the guy on the ground, that's a human player. And that's pulled from the the script. On the side, the team leader is the leader of the hurt player, the guy on the ground. The group is the group of the hurt player. And in this instance, I've set a 100 meters uh, response distance. It finds out how many near units there are within 100 meters of the hurt player. It then has a look to see how many live AI there are in, in the group. And it checks to see how many live players there are in the group. And waits until there's at least one AI that is alive. If there is at least one, then it uh, creates a, an array called nearest AI in group. If there aren't any, then the script exits. And then basically it selects the first element in the nearest AI in group because that's the closest guy to the hurt player. And we call him the close responder. The close responder then is forced out of the group player and forced into the intergroup null. In other words, his own group. He's then set to safe, full, uh, combat mode blue and, auto and his position can be auto. And then it sends a little... Uh, hint to all of the computers on the network uh, saying that uh, unit close responder is trying to get to the hurt player it puts the name of those into a hint on the screen and it checks to see if there are any bad guys in the area and then uh, it checks to see how far the close player the close responder is to the hurt player and if he's greater than 2.15 meters and he's and they're both alive then it it gets the position of the hurt player and it tells the close responder to move to that position. And then um, it sends another message saying that uh, once this condition, once this loop completes, obviously then the close responder must be within 2.15 meters. So he's, re he's reviving. It stops him checks to see where the nearest bad guy is, sleeps for two seconds, but that basically allows the unconscious player to roll over onto his back. I could try and switch move him, but it's a bit tricky because uh, that animation is built into the revive system. It gets a position. It's 1.2 meters in front of the, lie, the hurt player on the ground. And then the close responder is put in that position, and then the direction is switched to the hurt to look at the hurt player. And it's quite a complicated thing; is uh, it doesn't work 100%. But that's why I have this delay because otherwise you often get, end up with the hurt player rolling over onto his back, and then the close responder, in this instance, comes running up and he ends up because he didn't wait long enough. He hasn't got the actual correct direction to the player, ends up facing the wrong way. Which looks a bit weird. Anyway, then in the instance that the combat mode for the hurt player is not red and the distance to the nearest bad guy is greater than 75 meters, then he basically runs up, he, he gets to the player, he crouches down and he goes into a normal kneeling animation. I truncate this animation sequence because these guys, this is made up of like five or six animations and so I force the animation to to end after it's done the initial kneel down start healing it forces a play move now it switches him into a wounded out state so that the close responder then stands up and goes back and does his normal thing in order to do that i've had to disable animation on the close responder the alternative to this condition is that the combat mode is is red or the combat mode is yellow 
and the stance is currently prone or crouched and the distance to the nearest bad guy is less than 75. In other words, it's a high threat, high threat condition. Then the close responder will, will play the animation, which is medic lying down and healing. And it sleeps for 11 seconds. And then the, it then overrides the biz revive state. The, this little line basically does a lot of the magic. It basically overrides the, the little uh, cartwheel in the middle of the screen and the gets rid of the granular effect on the screen and it sets the player back to uh, from unconscious state and, and repairs his health and puts it back to zero. Then it sends another remote uh, hint to the screen saying uh, the player was revived by one of the AI. It then rejoins the AI back to the group. It then remote execs uh, allow damage. And this is the tricky part that I struggled with because the object close responder AI sometimes in, he can die in the process of trying to heal you so I switch his damage off but because he's not part of the group and then when he rejoins back to the group sometimes the damage state is allowed damage state is still off and so I set this across the network to to force it I force the group to reconstitute itself and that's how it works so if you want to use the script, if you have ways of improving it, that would be terrific. So I think it's kind of functional at the moment. Uh, I've tested it with uh, three or four players. It seems to work pretty well. So thank you for watching. If you have comments, please leave them and uh, I'll try and respond. Please subscribe. Thanks very much. Cheers.